Voice and data networks, how voice is encoded. Objectives. At the end of this section, you should be able to describe transport, session, and presentation layers related to VoIP. Describe how voice is encoded and the role of codecs in the compression and quality of voice. Describe strategies to reduce bandwidth consumption. Choose an appropriate codec for the job and describe the session description protocol. VoIP and the Open Systems Interconnect model. The Open, Supis, sorry, the Open Systems Interconnect model is a layered model to represent the network. So the model starts with the physical layer up to the application layer. And one layer communicates to each adjacent, adjacent layer. So in the physical layer, we have Ethernet, that is the normal networks that we use, wireless networks, uh, serial networks such as V35 and RS-232. The physical layer, layer describes the type of cable, the type of signaling, uh, frequencies, and everything that's related to the physical network. In the data, la data link layer, you have the frames. So you have technologies that in-frame uh, a packet. And you have the most common is Ethernet, but you also have frame relay, PPP, point-to-point -point protocol. And in most cases in these days, we're using a lot of Ethernet because most of the technology, the, the data transmission technology, move it through Ethernet in the recent years. Even fiber is using the Ethernet framing in the data link layer. And wireless also use the Ethernet uh, framing for the data link layer. For the network layer, we have IP. IP version 4, IP version 6. In some cases, you also use multi protocol label switching, that it's the encoding of layer 2 protocols on layer T, layer 3, to it's, it's often used for uh, wide area networks. In the transport layer, we have UDP, TCP, and TLS, uh, user datagram protocol, transport counter protocol, and in some of these encrypted forms. For voice, we are particularly interested on RTP, real-time transport, transport protocol, secure real-time transport protocol, and real-time contra protocol. These are uh, often used for, for voice over IP. In the session layer, we have protocols to establish, to maintain, and to disconnect sessions. So these are actually the protocols for calls. You can establish a call, you can manage a call, you can disconnect the call. In this case, we will compare A323 uh, SIP, Session Initiation Protocol, MGCP, Media Gateway Control Protocol, and IX. So these protocols are in the same layer of the OC model and the session layer, and we can compare these protocols between each other. In the presentation layer, we have codecs, voice codecs and video codecs. Here are some examples of voice codecs like G729, G711, GSM. For video codecs, you will find H.264, V8, some of these protocols, they are in the presentation layer. So we can compare G729 with G711, but we cannot compare G729 with SIP because they are in different layers of the OC model. In the application, we have our own PBXs or soft switches, the application that uses the, the codecs, the session protocol, the transport, network, data link, and physical. The importance here of this, this picture is to show you where are the session present, uh, the session protocols, A323 SIP, where are the presentation protocols, G729, and avoid confusions between the layers. Next, uh, how voice is encoded? The audible voice is from 20 to 20,000 hertz, but most of the, the, the voice is on this this range of 4,000 hertz. So you can take an analog signal, filter to 4,000 hertz with a low band and high band filter, and then you send this to a, to a processor and the processor will sample, compress, decompress, quantize, and code the signal into a digital signal. So it will measure here, this is 10, 12, and encode this in bits and bytes uh, using different types of algorithms. According to the Nyquist theorem, we need twice the bandwidth to digitally encode uh, an analog signal. So that's why we have 8,000 samples per second for 4,000 Hertz, and this consumes 64 kilobits per second. That's why everything in voice is a multiple of 64. So we have lines of 128 to 156 
everything is a multiple of 64 kilobits per second or at least was right now the technology is changing and most of the times we're not using tdm we're starting to use uh ethernet as the main network so some of this uh right now it's, it's kind of unusual 256 kilobits per second we are talking about 10 meg 100 meg and one gig circuits in these days and then after sampling this the signal we have bits 010101 that's what what we call the postcode modulation is the modulation of an analog signal into a digital signal that's how voice when you start with your mechanical voice goes to the phone a microphone converts in an electro, electrical signal this electro signal is sampled compressed decompressed quantized and codes into a digital signal sampled twice the bandwidth of the analog signal and this generates a stream of bits that can be tra transmitted on a digital network. Coder codec. Before we talk about codec, let me define the codec. Coder decoder. A codec is a device or computer program. I like the computer program part. Codec is actually a computer program that runs in a floating point processor on a, or a fixed point processor. And it's responsible to encode and decode a digital data stream or a signal. Compen type. Sometimes uh, we have the coder and decoder, but we also have the compen type. Compen type are algorithms. This is the keyword. It's an algorithm to reduce the dynamic range of an audio signal. So when you transfer from an analog signal to a digital signal, you have different algorithms to represent this digital signal on, on the system. The way you, you generate the zeros and ones is different. In North America, they use the mi law right often called mu law or u law because it's difficult to type the mi uh, and is, this is also defined on the real-time protocol as the pcmu is postcode modulation mi law uh, it's it's an algorithm used in north american japan to encode voice in europe they use the a law europe latin america and africa and it's defined in the rtp in the real-time protocol as pcma the difference between uh, these compound types is minimal. It's just important to understand that if you are using a digital circuit in Europe or Latin America, it's probably encoded in A law. And if you're using the same circuit in the, in the United States or Japan, it's probably encoded in B law. Bandwidth and quality considerations per codec. Uh, my objective here is to show you how to choose a codec. And there are tons of codecs more than a hundred and to simplify i have chosen the four most popular codecs in the on the in the world in these days the codecs that are available in most phones the codecs in that in my opinion deserve mention the first one is g711 is the standard is the main protocol for all systems right it uses 64 kilobits per second it's free you don't need to pay for it it can be encoded in mi law or a law so you frequently see g711 u g711 a or pcmu pcma there's no mechanism for packet loss resistance so it's very nice for local area networks right so when you don't have packet loss it works really well the complexity mips is zero dirt that not 35 so 350 uh, thousand uh, instructions per per second so it's a low complexity codex it does not use a lot of processor and the popularity is a hundred percent so all phones all phones and all systems support g711 the second codec that deserves mention is g729a is the main protocol for wide area networks why it's important for wide area networks wide area networks have some packet loss sometimes so it's interesting to have a protocol that reduces the packet loss. So we have 3%. Another important aspect of G729 is the bandwidth reduction. It reduces the bandwidth used in A times. So instead of 64 kilobits per second, you have 8 kilobits per second. It's, it wasn't free, right? It, was, it used to cost $10 per channel. But right now the patent is expired. So there are many people providing G729 for free. 
The complexity in MIPS is a bit high, 13 MIPS, 13 millions of instructions per second. And it's very popular. Almost all phones, IP phones support G729. Opus, Opus, it's a new, very new codec. Uh, it's, it's provided by a consortium of companies that uh, develop the, the protocol. It goes from narrow band to wide band. It has, it has used a different uh, codex from Skype, like Silk. So in the, in the narrow band, band it's mostly Silk and wide band uses some codex provided by Google. And it's free. It can resist to packet loss above 7%. So it's exceptional for the internet where you use, you're supposed to have uh, more packet loss. And the complexity in MIPS is variable. It can go from 11 millions of instructions per second to more than 48 millions of instructions per second, depending, depending if you are encoding uh, narrow band or wide band. Uh, you can check some of the complexity of the Opus network on this on this link. On this link, you can see the millions of seconds per second. Why why it's important to understand the the complexity? Because if you are dimensioning a server for voice, it will give you an idea of how much CPU power you need for each for each. For each uh, sim simultaneous voice channel, right? And G722 is the HD high definition protocol. It uses 64 kilobits per second. So comparing to G711, uses the same bandwidth but provides a better audio quality. It's free. It can resist up to three percent. The complexity MIPS is five, and popularity 50 percent. Actually, in these days, almost all IP phone supports G722. It's very interesting for international calls because you have a better voice quality. It's easier to understand the other side. Opus. Opus is the new codec and is exceptional. It goes from narrow band to wide band, right? So uh, you can encode like full band exterior and 128 kilobits per second. It's probably better than than mp3 for bsg722 if you look you're going to see that they use less bit rate use less bandwidth to encode uh, a signal that it's uh, better in terms of so it delivers a better quality over less bandwidth right compared to the other protocols it's interesting to see the power of the opus compared as an example to g711 or g722 here uh, for G722, you use 64 kilobits for wideband, while Opus for the same quality will deliver it in the same audio quality in 60 kilobits per second. So it's it's an interesting protocol. This is something that you should pay attention when you are developing your project for voice over IP. In summary, postcode modulation is a technology to encode an analog signal into digital signal. A law and me law are algorithms to encode voice digitally. Codecs affect voice quality, packet loss resistance, and the user of CPU and the voice bandwidth. And some of the best codecs, if you want to choose, choose G711 for LAN, 729 for WAN, wide area network, Opus for the internet, and G722 if you want high definition voice. Thank you.